mine. Toys. Hey, this is D Hunter bringing you another action figure review. Take a look at the Mafex Alien Big Chap Xenomorph figure. This is a Mafex figure, the first time they've made Alien. This is going to be from the first Alien film. So I've been looking forward to this for quite a while. The accessories look pretty cool, and Mafex does a great job with detail. They have some bad history of the figures falling apart easily, but their quality control has been improving over time, so I expect this figure to be pretty cool. Now, I got this figure all the way from Japan, ordered about a month ago. Here it finally is. It came in, the box was in the worst possible shape I've ever seen. I've been collecting for a long time and I've never received a package in that bad of shape. The box was destroyed, damaged, kicked, beat up, and wet. Super, super annoying. I'm thinking this happened in America because it's still wet right now, and my tracking information showed that it's been in the country for at least a week. So this box is in a little bit better shape than the other one. It is open on the top already. It's been crushed, as you can kind of see. Not as bad as the other one, and that says a lot. Been pushed in at the back here. So this one here, it's wet still right now. You can possibly see some of the water drops inside of there. If this took longer to get here, it'd probably start molding. I can almost push my finger through the package back here. Horrible, horrible shape. Completely destroyed, damaged. Luckily, both the figures appear to be in just fine condition as well as their accessories. So let's look at the actual packaging, see what it's like in case we actually had a nice one. So the aliens inside of here, it looks like he's got six different hands. He's got different heads, face hugger, chest burster, and a couple different inner jaw accessories. You can see here Mafex, the 84th figure in the Mafex line, Xenomorph. Here he is looking down. On the top, it simply says Alien. One side, got Big Chap looking down, and it says Alien. Actually, he's not looking down, he's looking to the side. This one here, looking down on the other side. The bottom, bunch of credits, as well as a barcode. Then the back side, you can see the actual figure. He's looking pretty cool, just sort of standing there. Here he is, here he is with his mouth out. Here are his accessories, those look really, really cool. So, with no further ado, let's open these two guys up. Now this is how the box came in from overseas. I do usually pick cheaper shipping and it takes about a month to get it. So waiting a month and getting this, a little bit disappointing. Very glad I'm not a mock collector. So you can see here, it says received in damaged condition. The mailman signed off on that. Feels like it's been wet. Cardboard's in horrible shape. I mean, look at this thing. This is absolutely ridiculous. I've gotten at least 20 figures from amyamy.com, Mafex figures, and I've never actually had this happen before. So I'm not going to be keeping them unopened, so hopefully they're intact, good condition. I don't care if the package is messed up as long as the figure is not broken. Had this been a package with Batman figures, I would have been very disappointed because I do keep those unopened in good condition. Luckily with Aliens, I just got this to open. As I'm continuing to open this, and at this point, I don't know if the figures are damaged or not. This cardboard is wet. It's wet right now. I don't understand what happened. This had to be from the United States Post Office because it's wet now, and this has been in the country for at least a week. So here they are, out of the package, smashed to high hell, and they're wet. Both of them are a little bit wet. I don't understand what the post office did here. I mean, you can see I can almost push my finger right through here. That kind of sucks. Luckily, the figure itself looks to be fully intact, no issue there. And that really goes with both packages here. This one's already pretty much open. So, you know what? Oh, well, looks like I'm going to be good to go. If this was any of my Batman Mayfix figures, I would have been wanting a refund or wanting USPS to pay. Usually, there's insurance for up to at least $100. These two figures together cost a little bit more than that, though. All right, well, now that we got this guy out of the package, here he is with all of his accessories laid out. He has the typical Mafix stand, six hands, two mouths, two heads, and a face hugger and chest burster. Now, I must say, I'm really not liking it so far. This particular one that we're looking at here is in a better quality than the other one. Oh my god, handling the other one, every single thing's falling off constantly. Put one thing in, three more things fall off. 
This one here, not really having that problem as much. Boy, when I opened the first one, I was really, really disappointed, and I still am. This one here is a little bit different than the other one. His pieces seem to fit in better. We will get to that a little later in the video. But before we look at his accessories, let's look at the actual figure. I mean, his detailing is good. I was just not happy with the experience of handling the first one. I'm being extremely gentle because I feel like he's just going to completely fall apart any second now. You can see his head, smooth dome. You can see the inner skull. Really, really nice detail there. I'm not going to lie. That looks great. I mean, the sculpt is good. The paint is good. I was just extremely disappointed with the other one. You will see what I mean later. His tail has a bendy wire in it. I mean, his feet look good. His toes. You can see the detail in his legs, that, you know, mechanical, biomech sort of look to him. Overall, he visually looks nice, and this particular one doesn't seem to be falling apart nearly as easy as the other one. And then here are both figures out of the package. And then here's the figure broken down as far as you can go. Now don't get me wrong, you can pull his arms off, his torso off, all his little tubes from the back off as well. really don't want to do that. The more you do it, the looser he's going to get. And those aren't really parts that are enhanced by interchangeable accessories. A little feedback on the hands. I'm having a really hard time telling which one's right hand and left hand. And honestly, all six hands are fairly similar. It almost seems unnecessary to have included so many. So now let's look at his actual accessories. First of all, he does come with a traditional Mafex stand. I am not much of a stand guy, so I'm not even going to open this out of the plastic. I'm just going to toss it into my large box of stands, never to be seen again. And then next, let's go ahead and check out his six different hands. And then here he is with his first set of hands. These are the default hands that he came with. And then here he is with his next set of hands. His fingers are spread out a little bit differently. And then here is his third pair of hands, which are extremely similar to the first pair. Kind of not sure why they included this one. I do believe both his right and left hands are interchangeable with each hand, as far as I can tell anyway. And then here are his two heads. And they both are pretty nice. The only real difference between the two heads is one of them here has an inner jaw that doesn't move, his mouth is completely shut. And the other one here has a bottom jaw part that is removable, so you can add a different jaw piece to there. And then when attaching his head, he's got a peg here in the center. His neck is actually sort of removable here. And so when you put the actual head on, obviously, the peg will go into the hole. And he's got these little wires here, and they fit into each of these holes in the back there. So here he is wearing his head with the mouth that's permanently attached. As you can see here, the top dome is clear. You can see that skull underneath. And one thing that both the heads can do, which is pretty cool, is you could actually remove the clear dome and see the alien skull up close and personal. This is a really, really cool detail that I've never seen an alien figure have before. And then here he is with his other head attached. This one can have the exact same feature. You can remove the dome and show his skull. In addition to that, you can remove the jaw piece and attach a different jaw piece. He does have a mouth already in there. This is the one that would be completely inside of his mouth. And then here he is with his alternate open mouth bottom jaw attached. As you can see here, he's got the inner mouth that came with the figure inside and it stays completely inside but there are other options as well and so this guy does come with three different interchangeable inner jaw pieces this top one here of course is going to be the default one he came with it's completely in his mouth then one that's just a tiny bit larger and then one that's completely out as if he's biting somebody and then here he is with the first inner mouth and then here he is with his second inner mouth inside. It's a little bit lower than the other one and closer to the front of his teeth where there's a gap. You can see here on the second inner jaw, it sits between his 
bottom and top set of teeth so you can kind of see it sit inside there. And then here he is with his third inner jaw. This one is protruding outside of his mouth. He's in the middle of head biting somebody. Next, let's look at his face hugger and chest burster accessory. These are definitely the accessories I was most excited for from him. This is the first time we've gotten a face hugger that can actually wrap around a figure's face, as well as a chest burster that's in the middle of coming out of someone's chest and you can put onto any figure you'd like. Really, really cool features. Here's his face hugger as it is wrapped around an Alien 3 Ripley's head. This is a NECA figure. NECA figures are a little bit bigger than Mafex figures. So I do believe this face hugger is specifically scaled for Mafex figures, but it does work with NECA figures, which is awesome. As you can see here, tail wrapped around her neck, fingers wrapped around her head, looking excellent. And then of course, what happens after the face hugger impregnates somebody? It goes and crawls away and dies. And you can see here the inside of the face hugger. It's got some nice detailing. You can see that sort of mouth inside there or whatever you call it that would impregnate somebody. It's made of a softer material. You can uncurl it, although it goes right back into place. And look, notice the detailing on the fingertips as well. And then of course, after the figure sugar crawls off and dies, shortly after you'll have a chest burster coming out. How long after? Well, that just depends on which movie you're watching. This is very reminiscent of the part in Alien 3 where the queen chest burster was coming out of her as she dropped into the molten lava. And this little bugger here, he looks pretty cool. He's got his tail wrapped up. You can see a puddle of blood at the bottom. That's how it looks like at the bottom. Pretty nice, and I love that you can put it on pretty much any figure you want to. And then here are these two Mafex face huggers compared with a couple of standard NECA face huggers. And then here they are next to all the different color versions of the NECA Aliens facehugger. We've got the standard versions, blue gorilla versions, green versions that came with the arcade pink alien, two glow-in-the-dark versions at the back, and then one 994 Alien vs. Predator arcade game facehugger. And then here they are next to some NECA Alien Covenant facehuggers. These are a little bit larger than the NECA Aliens version. And then here they are next to some Queen facehuggers, both the version from Alien 3 Assembly Cut and the Kenner version. And then here they are next to the Giant Kenner Homage version. And then here they are next to some actual old school Kenner versions of the facehugger. These guys can also wrap around action figures faces, but the tail does not. And then here they are next to some Hasbro facehuggers from the Alien Resurrection line, quite oversized. And here they are next to some McFarlane facehuggers. We've got both a dead one and a couple live ones. And then here are the Mafex chestbursters next to a couple of standard NECA Aliens chestbursters. They are a little bit different. The one from Mafex are based off the first film. The ones from NECA in this picture are based off of the second film. Also, the ones from Mafex are as it's bursting out of the chest, fresh, newborn, covered in blood. And then here they are next to all the different colors of the NECA Aliens chestburster variation. In the near future, we're going to be getting an ultimate big chap from NECA, and that's going to give us a an alien version of the chest burster. We've got the aliens version already. They're also making an ultimate dog alien so we can get the queen chest burster from Alien 3. The only movie we're not going to be getting a chest burster from, it looks like, is Alien Resurrection. Maybe they'll give us a, an accessory pack in the future for that. That'd be pretty cool. And then here they are next to some more NECA chest bursters. These are both Neomorph and Xenomorph chest bursters as seen in Alien Covenant. And then here they are next to a couple of Bambi bursters. This is literally as large as the chest burster was that came out of either the dog or the ox alien in Alien 3. And then here they are next to a couple of Hasbro chest bursters from the Alien Resurrection line. One is for a warrior, one is for the queen. And then here they are next to a couple of Queen chestbursters from the Kenner line. 
Now that we've taken a pretty in-depth look at his accessories, next let's check out the height of this figure. So from foot to the top of the head, this guy's sitting on just a hair under eight inches. That's a seven and three quarter inches. Next, let's show this guy's articulation, and it's quite a bit. So his head, of course, it can go around. It can look up and down as well. His neck piece here, some soft material, can move independently and be removed. His jaw, I wouldn't call it articulated, but it can be removed. His shoulders here, there's a ball joint underneath there, and his actual shoulder moves independently of that ball joint. So there's articulation in the ball, as well as the arm being able to move independently of there. His elbows are double jointed, completely straight out, and completely upright as well. There is no swivel in there. His hands are kind of on a ball joint. It's really not a ball joint exactly. It's a peg that's hinged. You can swivel around the peg and then it's hinged as well. His ab crunch here, not really an ab crunch, but it's a ball joint in the middle there. It can go forward and back as well as around. His hips go out really not too far. I don't want to push it. They got this sort of stuff here that's obstructing the sculpt. There is a ball joint inside of there, but the legs can also move independently against this. There's two points of articulation here. Knees double jointed in the own Mafex unique way. No swivel at all there. His foot, of course it can go up and down. It's got this sort of heel part back here. It's a ball joint side of there and it looks like the articulation, this thing is separate, not really articulated, but it's loose. Of course it can go around, up and down. Then he does have some toe articulation. Then go up and back down, it popped out just now. This is my better alien where the pieces don't pop out that hard on him. And then on the back of the figure, his tubes, they do move up and down and around a little bit. They can come off pretty easily, so just be careful with them. His spine piece can also come off. This one here is secured very nicely. I really don't want to pull it off to make it loose. His tail. It can move at the base, and it's of course on a wire, so it'll hold whatever position you want to put it into. And like I said before, this is definitely the better of the two aliens. I was able to go over all his articulation without really much falling apart. His toe, but you know, I can live with that. Now this one here is the one that's betraying me constantly. You simply touch him and he falls apart. If I were to try to go over the articulation, I mean, his arm comes off so easily, try to put his arm back in, then you'll have, you know, move his head around, oh, his spine comes off so easily, try to put that thing back on, then his tubes are going to start coming out. I mean, this guy's just a pain in the ass to deal with. His arm fell off again, his chest comes off, there goes his back spine piece again. Overall, this one here is a piece of crap compared to the other one. I'm not sure what the difference is. If you get this kind, you're going to hate this guy. If you get that kind, you're going to like him. Next, let's check this guy out compared with some other action figures. Starting with a bunch of big chaps, and we'll look at some other alien figures, and then some predator, engineer, and human figures as well, just to see how he fits in both scale and style-wise. And then here they are next to the NECA big chap. You can see the NECA big chap is a little bit bigger than them, but really not by that much. Just to kind of compare them a little bit, you can see their heads here. I'd say the Mafex one does have better and more detail. Overall, both great figures. The Mafex one, a little more delicate, fragile, better detailed, and a little bit smaller. And then here they are with what I believe are some McFarlane Big Chap figures. I must confess I'm not 100% sure if this is McFarlane or older NECA. And then here they are next to an older NECA Big Chap figure. This is an older NECA figure that predates series 1 and 2 of their Aliens line. And then here they are next to a couple of Alien Isolation Xenomorphs. These guys were nicknamed Stompy and are very reminiscent of the Big Chap design. And then here they are next to several different variations of the NECA Big Chap. Simply repainted, 
from left to right, we've got Kenner, light blue, big chap. Then we've got the Aliens Genocide, red, big chap. Then we've got the white concept albino, big chap. And then this all black one is a Kenner two pack, big chap, Alien vs. Predator two pack. Then, of course, we've got the Mafex big chaps in the middle, followed by the regular NECA big chap, and then a couple repeats. And then here they are next to a couple of other smooth-headed aliens. These guys pretty much have the big chap head on the alien's body. We've got the Alien Club exclusive, as well as the Burke two-pack alien. There are a couple of other aliens that use smooth heads. For example, an Alien vs. Predator, Alien Covenant, Alien Resurrection. But they're not big chaps exactly. These guys are a little bit closer to big chaps than those. Next, I'd like to look at these guys next to alien figures from each one of the alien films, starting with the big chap from Alien. And here they are next to a couple of ultimate xenomorphs from Aliens. And then here they are next to a couple of dog aliens from Alien 3, one of them on all fours and one of them standing in his most upright position. And here they are next to a couple of Alien Resurrection Warriors, these are actually not NECA figures, but McFarlane figures. The NECA version of the Alien Resurrection Warrior actually just released, and I should have mine in less than a week. These guys are equally as tall as the NECA figures. Here they are next to Grid and a couple of Warriors from Alien vs. Predator. Here they are next to an Alien Warrior and the Pred Alien from Aliens vs. Predator Requiem. Here they are next to a couple of Deacons from Prometheus. And here they are next to a couple of Warriors from Alien Covenant. Here they are next to a couple of Ultimate Predators from Predator 1 and 2. This is the Ultimate Jungle Hunter and Ultimate City Hunter. Here they are next to a couple of Engineers from Prometheus. And here they are next to some various human figures from NECA's Alien and Predator lines. So overall this is a nice figure, but both of mine are completely different as far as the quality goes. I got these guys to supplement my NECA collection, looking for a better detailed big chap. And you know what, this works. They're a little bit shorter, but not by too much, so in my opinion they fit in good with my collection. Their accessories are excellent as well. If I were to rate these figures, I'd give the one that I have that has pretty good quality a good solid 7 out of 10. It's a nice figure. I really do like the removable dome, the skull underneath is really cool. If I were to rate the other one of my figures, I'd probably give it a 3 out of 10. It's a complete frustrating mess to even handle. It makes you really upset. I don't want to glue them together and just keep them as a statue pose. I'm also going to be getting the Figma Big Chap real soon. I should have him in about a week. Looking forward to doing a review on him. He's going to be even shorter than this one. So I have a feeling I've set myself up for disappointment with that guy. So thank you guys for watching this video. This is D Hunter. If you liked the video, press like below. If you have anything you want to say about the video, add it in the comment section. If you want to see additional action figure reviews from me, press subscribe. I do appreciate when you do that. Once again, this is D Hunter. Thank you guys for watching this video, and I will talk to you guys real soon.